Hey, where have you gone? It's our first family trip in a long time, so I figured I'd enjoy it with just my family. We'll return home after we've finished our sightseeing. Perhaps you can run home. I'm not sure how long that will take. My mother-in-law chuckled as she mocked me. You like this nasty town, don't you? Today, enjoy it on your own. There is laundry to be done. Her son will return from training camp at some point today. So come home tonight and finish it. My husband gladly directed my movements. I couldn't contain myself any longer. You should do your own laundry. Hello, hello. What's the deal with your demeanor? I'm the family's breadwinner. Time has passed. That is no longer how things work. What? You are truly impolite today. When I get home tonight, I'll teach you a lesson, so be ready. You can disregard anything I've stated. In any case, I'm never going to see you again. Huh? My spouse and in-laws were all taken aback. Emma is my name. I'm 42 years old and work in an office. Elijah, my spouse, is two years my senior. We met at work, where he was my boss's boss. He was competent at his profession, and I admired him. So we tied the knot. We were delighted when our son Alexander was born shortly after we married. But our connection quickly disintegrated. My husband's parents, I would argue, were the cause of our relationship's demise. That is not an exaggeration. Particularly his mother. She never liked me and was always bothering me. My husband used to shield me from them, and we lived far away from them. So I was fine with it because I didn't have to see my in-laws very much. However, Elijah was transferred to a different office around the time our son started high school. Elijah was relocated to an office in his hometown, where his parents still lived. Both Elijah's employment and the high school our son attended were close to my in-laws' home. As a result, we found ourselves living very near them. To accommodate my family, I decided to quit my job and look for new employment in Elijah's hometown. I got a job at a much nicer company than the one at the office. Then there's the one I was working on before. I didn't have to work extra, and I was able to leave work reasonably early. As a result, I had extra time to make dinner and pack lunches for my husband and children. But it also meant that I had to spend extra time with my mother-in-law because she knew I'd be home early. And would pay a visit. She would come over just to bully me. As a result, life became extremely stressful. My in-laws planned a trip to a spa resort town around that time, and they encouraged me to join them. They said Elijah, Alexander, and I should come. I approached Alexander and inquired if he was interested. I have a training camp set up for my team. So I can't, he responded. He's been a baseball player since he was in middle school. And the high school he's now attending has a rather strong squad that has training camps during school breaks. Oh, you're serious. Then there's nothing we can do about it. Huh? Are you sure you want to go? After all, I enjoy going to spas. Will you be all right? Alexander was well aware of how his grandmother treated me. He was also aware that his father had recently been harsh with me. He appeared concerned that something horrible would happen to me. It should be fine. If something happens, I'll handle it. Then Alexander appeared to comprehend. The day flew by, and before I knew it, it was time to leave. Go pick up mom and dad tomorrow when you get the rental car. Elijah spoke to me without looking away from the television. What will you be doing after I return the rental car? Because I'm fatigued from work, I'll sleep until we go. You can come get me when you get my parents, right? In any case, our house is facing the resort. My husband has recently been acting in this manner. He makes me do anything, which irritates him. I also worked all day and did all of the chores. I made his lunch and dinner, which he just finished. I'm exhausted more than he is, 
no matter how you look at it. But Elijah is only concerned with himself. When we first married, we divided the housework evenly. Even when our son was young, he was a great assistance to me. Elijah was given more duties at work as Alexander grew older, so he began doing less cleaning. On weekends, however, he would still pitch in with cleaning or cooking. However, since we moved here and his mother began to visit more frequently, he has completely stopped assisting around the house. It must be because my mother-in-law would criticize me for allowing him to do housekeeping. What is Elijah doing doing housework? Isn't that the wife's job? That's what she'd always say. He's the breadwinner, so he should concentrate on his work. She said it every time she came over. She gradually brainwashed Elijah into not helping around the house. That is correct. I don't have to do any housework. I'm not sure why you forced me to do it until now. He'd even blame me for the fact that he's already helped out around the house. It was out of my hands, and I couldn't figure out how to rectify it. Over the course of a few years, Elijah had undergone significant transformations. He began experiencing problems at work and began lashing out at me on a frequent basis. Even if I tried to reason with him, he would not listen. It got irritating to me. So I just quit trying at some point. That was the least stressful way to live for me. I thought about getting a divorce. However, because Alexander attended a private high school, his tuition was costly. And things will only get more expensive once he starts university. I decided it was too much for me to bear. As a single mother. I decided to ignore Elijah as much as possible and just go along with him because he handed us money. Thinking in this manner has made me think less stressfully, and as a result, I haven't felt desperate enough to seek a divorce. This unpleasant town that we will be visiting was among my favorites, and I anticipated having a great time by myself. While my husband and in-laws are off doing their own thing, they probably only saw me as a driver. Worse comes to worse, my spouse or father-in-law may occasionally drive. Anyway, I followed my husband's directions and picked up the rental car the next day. Then I went to see my in-laws. Emma, aren't you running late? What the hell? This is the vehicle we're driving. It would have been preferable if we had a larger vehicle. At the very least, it's better than your car. I normally drive a tiny automobile that I made myself. Because I drive it every day and am the only one who uses it, I paid for it myself. A little automobile is ideal for commuting, and I enjoy the interior and color of the car. My spouse drives his parents around in my car without telling me, therefore, his folks complain about my automobile. And people look down on me because they believe I can only afford a little car. That is why we went out of our way to rent a car for our trip. To be honest, I assumed we could just borrow my father-in-law's car. If we had done that, they would have come to pick us up right away, and I wouldn't have had to drive back and forth like this. However, my father-in-law stated that he dislikes traveling lengthy distances. And, maybe more crucially, he despises other people driving his car. He made us rent a car and drive him for selfish reasons. My husband and I were meant to drive together. However, he slept the entire way, forcing me to drive. My husband slept the entire time. My father-in-law chastised my driving. He'd instruct me to take turns when I couldn't, and when I could, he'd tell me to stop at a red light. He'd question why I wasn't driving quicker. It was quite inconvenient. My mother-in-law, who lacked a driver's license, would jump in and condemn me as well. I didn't want my mother-in-law, who couldn't drive, to tell me anything. At the very least, unlike my father-in-law, I haven't been in five vehicle accidents. They should take away his license before he causes another terrible accident. Are you prejudiced against me? Because of my age, none of the accidents have been my fault thus far. This is what he says whenever we recommend he quit driving. As a result, I really didn't want him to drive me. 
but I truly wish he'd quit criticizing me for everything. And he was complaining from the back seat. He was spitting everywhere, and it was disgusting. My husband immediately awoke when we arrived. Oh, it was much faster than I had anticipated. Hearing my husband say that so nonchalantly irritated me. My in-laws wanted to unwind once we arrived at the hotel because we had driven all day. So we did what they said and spent the remainder of the day at the hotel. I needed to wash my hair, so I dashed to the mineral bath at the hotel spa. We ate dinner and returned to our rooms after I roamed around the hotel on my own and had a good time. By the way, for this vacation, I stayed in a room with a single bed, while my husband and in-laws shared a three-person room. I had a lot of space to myself, so this was much more comfortable for me. I returned to my bedroom after another relaxing session in the mineral bath. I had purchased beer and munchies from the hotel's convenience store. So I sat in front of the TV and snacked. Alexander must be eating dinner with his teammates and having a good time this time. Perhaps he's playing video games in his training camp dorm room. I didn't want to irritate him by messaging or calling. When we come home, I'll tell him about our trip. I realized it was almost past midnight, so I snuggled myself into bed and fell asleep. I awoke the next morning and breathed in some fresh air. It would be wonderful if I could wake up feeling this good every morning. There were two hours until the clock struck 12. My in-law suggested we all get together for brunch. It was still only 6 o'clock. 30 a.m. I've gotten used to getting up this early to provide lunches for everyone. That's correct. I might as well take a leisurely morning bath while I'm here. I returned to the hotel bathhouse to relax in the hot water. The weather was pleasant. So the outdoor mineral bath felt incredible. When I returned to my room, I texted Alexander. I believe he stated that he would be returning home tonight, so he will most likely be waiting for us alone till we return. Alexander had already gathered my baggage and put on makeup by the time I contacted him. It was already close to 8 o'clock. 30, I went to have some breakfast. I went to my in-laws and husband's room because I was expected to eat breakfast with them. But there was no response when I knocked on their door. Maybe they went to the breakfast hall already. I went to the breakfast hall, but they were also not there. The breakfast room wasn't really large, so if they were there, I would have noticed them. I texted Elijah, but he didn't respond, believing it couldn't be true. When I spoke with the hotel receptionist, she informed me that Elijah and his parents had already eaten breakfast and had left. They said they were going to eat at 8 p.m. 30. The hotel breakfast appears to have started at 7.30, and my in-laws specifically instructed me to arrive at 8.30 in order to avoid having to dine with me. Furthermore, they left me to check out and pay for them after informing me they would pay for the trip with a lie. I'm responsible for both of our rooms. Of course, the automobile had vanished. They intended to abandon me and go home on their own. At first, I was furious. But then I knew it was pointless. That's fine if that's how they feel. I returned to the breakfast area, relaxed, to eat. I stayed in the motel until it was time to check out. So, what should I do next? My mother-in-law called just as I was contemplating this. Hey, where have you gone? My mother-in-law burst out laughing when I said it. It's our first family vacation in a long time. So I decided to spend it with only my family after all. So, what was the point of inviting me in the first place? We brought you along to drive us and pay for our accommodation. We took you to a resort town that you enjoyed. And you ate great food, therefore, if I had come with Alexander, you should be grateful to us. It would have been far less expensive. Why should I pay for all three of them? I let out a sigh to suppress my rage. We'll return home after we've finished our sightseeing. Perhaps you can run home. I'm not sure how long it would take. My mother-in-law chuckled as she mocked me. 
I didn't want to leave things as they were. Is Elijah behind the wheel now? Please put the phone on speaker so he can hear me. I could hear Elijah's voice once I requested it. What occurred? What makes you want to talk? Were you going to abandon me in this manner from the start? Don't get so worked up. You like this nasty town, don't you? Today, enjoy it on your own. There is laundry to be done. And our son will eventually return from his training camp. So, come home tonight and complete it. My husband gladly directed my movements. I couldn't contain myself any longer. You ought to do your own laundry. What's up with your attitude? This family's breadwinner is me. The family's head tells you to unwind before returning home. You should be crying with joy and appreciation right now. The world has changed. That is no longer how things work. What? You are truly impolite today. When I get home tonight, I'll teach you a lesson. Prepare accordingly. You can disregard anything I've stated. I never want to see you again. Anyway, my spouse and in-laws were all taken aback. I didn't run into you today. So, yesterday night's meal. When was the last time you did this? What exactly do you mean? My husband's voice trembled. So, I'm going to divorce you. A year ago, you served me with divorce papers. Since we relocated, you've changed. You were unusually frigid to me at this time last year. You were so angry one day that you handed me divorce papers. I rejected it since I was concerned about how I would pay for Alexander's tuition at the moment. Soon after, you apologized to me and suggested we shouldn't divorce. Despite this, we continued to be married. I lost faith in you. As a result, I engaged a private investigator. I also discovered you were having an affair with an old classmate. You seem to have reconnected after we moved to your hometown. So she's a single mother with a middle school-aged daughter. You probably pondered breaking up with me and marrying her at the time. But she declined the opportunity to remarry. You recognized that if we divorced, you'd be on your own. And you would have had to pay for child care. As a result, it would not have benefited you. In any case, you make me do all of the housekeeping. So life with me is simpler than existence alone. You basically treated me as your servant from then on. But that's okay. I only stayed with you for your money. I hid the evidence I had obtained from the private investigator in case something went wrong. Your affair may be done, but because it was discovered less than a year ago, I can still use it against you. I could hear how surprised my in-laws were as I talked. They didn't appear to be aware of Elijah's affair. I added something else, which startled my in-laws even more. I know you've been demoted and your salary has dropped, but I don't mind. When it comes to the alimony you owe me, I'm not going to be gentle. My in-laws were surprised once more, saying, good of you to act so important when you and I make the same salary. I make the same as you, but I also make lunch for you and Alexander and cook dinner for everyone. You were demoted and now only do a simple office job. Isn't it embarrassing to continually appear tired? And you proclaim yourself the breadwinner of the family? He remained silent as I continued to rub salt into his wound. Alexander's tuition was the sole reason I stayed married to you. But I discovered it, and as a single mother, I can seek help from his school. My parents will also assist me. So you're not required. You'll still have to pay me alimony and child support. I'd rather live a stress-free and joyful life without you, even if it means spending less money. I'll be filing for divorce, so enjoy your trip with your folks. In a panic, my in-laws called out my name. Elijah appeared to want to say something, but I hung up the phone. I boarded the local bus and made my way to the train station. I rode the express train home, feeling revitalized after telling Elijah what I needed to say. On the train, I ate lunch and drank a beer. Because the bus and train were on time, 
I arrived home before dark. I located the divorce forms and delivered them to City Hall. I'm pleased Elijah signed them over a year ago. Alexander returned home as I was gathering my belongings. Oh, you've returned early. Why are you by yourself? I had to tell you what had happened. I had to tell you what had happened. If you were getting a divorce, I'd accompany you. Alexander didn't appear upset or surprised. He's already a sophomore in high school. He must have seen that his father and I were having problems. Allow me to pack my belongings as well. He walked upstairs to pack. While on the train, I called my folks. So they arrived in their car, and Alexander loaded all of her belongings. Being a member of the baseball team had made him strong and dependable. He was nothing like his father. Elijah was quite pathetic when we moved here, and he moaned about how heavy everything was the entire time. We finished packing our belongings and drove to my parents' place. Elijah and his parents had repeatedly called. So when we arrived at my folks' house, I finally called back. Finally. Why didn't you pick up the phone earlier? I get to choose when I pick up the phone. Stop talking. I'm not going to divorce you. Regardless of what you say, we've become strangers. You signed the divorce papers over a year ago, and I filed them. No way. I'll be suing you for alimony and child support. If you wish to talk about it, please contact my lawyer. Wait. Emma, think about it. True, I deceived you once, but you are the only lady in my life now. I will look after you once more. Hearing what Elijah said was revolting. What I had eaten for lunch made me want to vomit. How dumb are you? What? I no longer have feelings for you. Why not rekindle your relationship with your ex? However, it appears that she has remarried. So I doubt you'll have much luck. Huh? Elijah appeared surprised. It appears that if he couldn't remarry me, he intended to remarry his ex-sweetheart. Why are men so simple-minded? When I contacted her about collecting money from her, I discovered she had remarried. Elijah's ex-girlfriend said she was fine with paying alimony. She only wanted me to keep things quiet so she could live happily with her new spouse. I let her get away with only paying the settlement because she seemed very sorry for what she had done. In any case, I wouldn't need it for Alexander lessons. Elijah paid me alimony and reparations. He appeared to be unable to pay it with his salary and savings alone, so he turned to his parents for assistance. My ex-in-laws were taken aback. Would their son do something like this? They're just as stupid as he is, but they deserve to be punished as well. So far, so good. I rented an apartment for Alexander and myself when everything was settled. Alexander grew into a fine young man even after we started living simply as the two of us. My mom and I went to one of his baseball games today. He looked so mature, standing at home plate, ready to bat. Range made a harsh metallic noise as he struck the ball, and he and his teammates raced around the bases. I clapped and cheered Alexander on as I thought to myself how glad I was to be watching him grow in this way.